Hey guys, what's up? My name is Farza, and today we're going to cover something called loops. Specifically, we're going to cover something called for loops. And for loops have many advanced and awesome uses, but let's go through one example where it's a very simple. It's a very simple example. So let's say you're in a game, and your team is just feeding out of their minds, right? Like bot lane specifically, they're just feeding out of their minds. And you want to tell them, you just want to spam at them to please stop feeding. Well, if you want to spam at them to please stop feeding, you have to do a print, a print, a print. Like, you have to keep on doing these, right? And do you see how this is redundant and it's not very necessary and there should be a better way to just, other than like copy and pasting the same line five times? Well, there is a better way. And it's called a for loop. And a for loop is basically just a counter in the end. So let's go through, I feel like if we go through just one, just a simple example, we'll understand it pretty quickly. Let's do this. I'm gonna do printf. Please stop. Eating. So a for loop always starts. The first before we even start the for loop, we have to initialize our counter. And after we do that, or not initialize, but just declare our counter, right? It's a, just a simple variable. It has no value right now. After that, we're gonna go over here. This is how our for loop starts. The first thing in our for loop is our initialization, which I put, which I've written as init. init. So the initialization is going to set counter equal to zero. And the most important part to understand about the initialization is that it only happens one time. After it happens once, it does not happen again at all. So let's go through it then. Counter is equal to zero. Now counter has a value. It's zero. The next thing we do is, if you look at this, this little block over in here, I can number it actually. Two. You know what? Let's just set... Uh, the initialization as step zero in it. That's our initialization step. All right, that only happens one time, so it's step zero. So we're gonna set counter equal to zero. Then we do we do our conditional, and this this checks if some if your value is meets some conditional. So is zero smaller than four? Yeah, zero is smaller than four. If that's true, run the code. And the code that you want to run is what's ever in between these two semicolons. That's that block of code that, you tr that you're trying to run. So after you run this block of code, the next thing you do is you increment your counter. And I know you, have, you guys have never seen this counter plus plus before, but this counter plus plus is the same thing as counter plus one. All it's doing is, is it's adding one to your counter. That's all it's doing. It's doing a counter plus one. That's all it's doing, except the plus plus, it's simpler and it looks nicer and it does the same thing in two little, um, two, two, two little characters. So after we increment, we're going to go to our step one again. So do you see how the initialization happens one time? So check it out. After I do counter plus plus, our counter is going to equal one, right? So you know, actually rather, let's just start from the beginning one more time. And make sure we get it now, now that we've seen, you know, how the code is laid out. So we start like this, counter is equal to zero, counter is smaller than four. So now I run this code. Now to counter plus plus. Now counter is equal to one. So now we jump back to this line of code. Is one, is four bigger than one? Yes, it is. If so, run this code and then jump back here. So now counter is equal to two. If now we jump back over here, right? It keeps on happening. It's a loop. Is uh, is four bigger than two? Yes, it is. If so, print this out. Now we jump back here. Counter is equal to three. Is three is four bigger than three? Yes, it is. If so, print this out. Now we're finally at the ending. Now, since we come back, come back here, counter plus plus. Counter is now counter will now be four. So now when we come back here. Four is not smaller than four. four. Four is not bigger than four. Four is equal to four. So at this point, our for loop will terminate and nothing, it'll just cancel everything out. It'll pretend like nothing else exists, right? It'll terminate right there. And let's see it in action. Ooh, actually, let me do something that I haven't shown you guys before. It's called a backslash n. And all it does is it skips a line after it prints something. So you know a piece of paper, you write something, then you skip a line, then you write something, then you skip a line. Just imagine it like that. It's just very simple. It's skipping a line after you print something. So let's build and run. 
So it prints out, please stop feeding four times, which is exactly what we wanted, right? Um, and an important thing to know, you know, of course, for loops have many uses, but we can put, we can do whatever we want in this block of code, right? It doesn't have to just be a print statement. It could, you know, just for fun, let's put another print statement. Let's just put, they won't stop feeding. Oh, whoa. So now, you know, if you run it, it'll print... It'll print them both like together. So please stop feeding. They won't stop feeding. Please stop feeding. They won't stop feeding. <sighs> the circle. It's, it's elo hell, man, I swear. But yeah, that's the basics of the for loop. And as long as you understand the basics, we can you know move on to much more complicated examples, which are way funner than just printing stuff out to our screen. But yeah, understanding this simple for loop is uh, pretty important. And the next episode, I'm going to cover something called a while loop, which has syntax that is a little easier. But... Uh, it's, it's, a little, it's a little easier to understand. Anyways, we'll cover that next video. We'll cover while loops next video. And until then, I'll see you later. I'll see you later.